Hi everybody. Um, I haven't posted a video for a little while. So this video is going to be basically an update on what I'm doing and some changes I made to the shop or to the workshop I should say. And um, this is what happens when you drink lots of Jack Daniels and start browsing the internet. But anyway, that's enough of that, isn't it? Right. So basically, there's been some changes I've made into the shop. Um, I wanted to sort things out safety wise um, and, and just some general changes but I think you'll be quite interested in some of them so don't go yet just hang on as you can see behind me right this is one of the first things I've done I'll bring you in closer in a minute and have a look and I'll post a couple of pictures up about here of the build of it this is my heat treat oven I've built. I was using the forge, as you know, to um, to do my heat treats and stuff. And I was getting pretty accurate results, but it wasn't dead on and I want it perfect. So this is what I've built. I've built myself a little heat treat oven. And like I said, I'll come in and do some closer ones in a minute. And this, uh, yesterday I was using it at 820 centigrade and it holds it within about three or four degrees. It's spot on. Um, the next stage is up to 1,050 and then I can start working with stainless um, and air quenching. And I've already spoken to the supplier today about it. Um, you don't need to cry over the ones I'm going to use, so it should be good. Um, but yeah, I'll let you have a look. Right, this is the oven, as you can see. have got a nice little handle on there. And as you can see, now inside, this is fire bricks, which are readily available. I'll try and put links for all this stuff if you want to use it. So these are your fire bricks, and let's say they're pretty readily available. I've then used a mortar on them, um, like a high temperature mortar, just to seal it all in and to give it a bit more efficiency. The wire is canthal wire. Now this is commonly used in vapes, you know, the old vape cigarette stuff. Um, and this, I'll again put some details of it, and it's just a single one. You can see it's sagging slightly because I was using it last night, and this stuff does tend to sag a little bit, but it's working fine. I then put more um, KL wool, or you know, this kind of ceramic walls around the outside, and I then covered it again in, in a strong foil. And it's made a hell of a difference. I was running 800 degrees yesterday, and you could touch the sides, no problem at all. So it's definitely working. Um, and then you've got the control unit underneath, which I'll show you now. Right, this is uh, the controller setup. Now this is an Inkbird controller. Again, I'll probably put links up for you. And I've just got a basic switch system. Now the reason I've done this is for safety more than anything else. The whole system's earth um, and is safe. But I don't really want to be putting my hands in there with a metal blade into the oven with, with it live. So the whole idea is when I'm up to temperature and I'm going to take a knife out, I literally just flick the switch. Now, if you flick the switch now, you can see, power is on and I'll just lift you up so you can see it and if you watch for a few seconds it's now set at 200 degrees and there we go it fires up and it works flawlessly absolutely flawlessly and you can see the temperature there you're seeing it flickering but it, it doesn't flicker it's just because of the camera I think we're up at 60 70 degrees already and then to turn it off you just turn a little switch and there we go and it's done so that's my my oven um, and I'm, I'm very pleased with it. So that's one thing. Let's move on to the next. Right, so that was the, the oven which we've gone through. There's another thing that maybe for beginner knife makers more that I think is really important. Um, and something that I've been overlooking and not been doing very well. Um, when I'm doing knife making, I've been like, probably like a lot of you, I've been using, you know, a mask. And it's a good mask, don't get me wrong, it's a 3M mask and it's rated for this kind of stuff, and it's pretty good. But the issue I've got is I've got all this. Now, there's a lot of guys out there, it seems to be, if you look at forging and fire, nearly everyone's got a beard, so beard and forging go together. Got to be done, have a look at it. But anyway, I think these aren't, they're not any good for beards. I mean, if you look at any site, they'll tell you that you don't need it. So be careful, because I've noticed my lungs are getting a bit sore and stuff, and that's because I've been in here a lot, and with the dust and the metal and the wood, You've got to look after your lungs. You know, you're gonna get one set. So as you can see, I've installed a fan unit. 
which is an extractor which helps take out some of the stuff but also I've bought myself something else and I'll show you now look I am your father well not really but I bought myself this now this is a trend air flow I think it's called or something but it was 200 pound fans on now and this will clear perfectly but it's really good it's it's rated i'll put the ratings down in, in the bottom again but it's rated for this kind of work there's other ones on there you've got to be careful when you look at these kind of masks that aren't good enough for what you need really but this is ideal for me it's good visibility people moan about it being heavy but um really good visibility and it just keeps me cool you get air constantly coming down through your face and it's just really good and you just literally turn it on the back it sucks air in through these filters, which obviously you've got to check. You get a little tool to check, make sure the airflow is working all right. But to be honest with you, fantastic bit of kit. There you go, AirShield Pro. Um, I got this one off of eBay. I didn't pay full price for it. Um, but they're about, but I highly recommend it. So look after yourself, guys. Now we'll move on to something more exciting. Right, guys, what you see in front of you isn't just a pile of scrap, which it looks like. Um, it's a log splitter which I've converted to a forge press um, for doing mainly Damascus billet stuff like that but I made a knife out of it yesterday I'll, um, I'll post a little video of it Right, the whole idea of this, I wanted something that I could keep as a splitter. So these dies remove and these come off, you know, and the same the other side. So basically this becomes a log splitter again. And now I've got reversible dies, but I've made a big mistake with this. I've cut these in too deep. These should have been out here more. So I'm gonna to have to weld a plate back onto here because it's virtually useless to do anything unless I'm using big stuff. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we turn them on, there he goes, look. And that's four tons of pressure. And believe me, it works fantastically well. So you can see I've set it up on there. You know, if anyone wants, you know, got any questions or whatever, you know, just put them in the comments and um, I'll answer it as much as I can. Now I've got this, now this, you know, I don't, again, you know, for a safety point of view, I don't advise anyone doing this kind of stuff unless you've got an idea what you're doing. I don't, but I still did it. But you know, just be safe when you're doing stuff. It's like I've got I've got live wires out at this stage, but this was just purely concept at this stage. So I, I I'm gonna change that, and that's gonna be hidden away and safe. But this is basically how it works. Now this is all I've done. I I moved the switch. Or oh, the, the, you've got a you've got a dead switch. I've put this main switch in. This is a switch normally you've got to hold in and you normally pull the lever. So it's a two-handed operation. So what I've done is pulled that switch in, which is your main one. So that one's on all the time. And then you've got another switch here. It's like a reset switch. So all I've done is fed a live from there to here, to this one here. And then I've got, as you can see, a rudimentary, lumber socks, a rudimentary system. Whereby I just do this. And I've got no hands. And it works perfectly. And I'm really, really chuffed with it. It means I can do Damascus and, you know, or force welded steel, whatever you want to call it, a lot more. So I'm really chuffed with it. Um, so there we are. That's pretty much the update. I, I've been getting myself set up. Also, um, what you can probably see here, if I go around there, I bought myself a 4x36 belt sander. I've still got the 1x30 down there. Now, with this one, you can use it and i'll do another video on that you can use these they're not you know they're a bit slow um you know you can't put massive pressure on them but you are more than capable of making knives with these ones um you know i've just done a done a blank there this is an x my lovely little axis as you can see and you know it does a really nice really nice grind on it and that was using that one so it's more than capable 
But there you go, guys. That's just a quick update. Sorry I haven't been posting. I'll, I'll um, get some more videos up of Knife making some, some, you know, useful stuff for you. But in the meantime, from me and from Frank and Logsplitter, we'll see you later. Bye.